Hello, welcome to the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm Fabi, and today we are going to talk about Proof Mode, an application available for Android and iPhone, which allows you to transform the multimedia you capture with your cell phone in notarized evidence backed by cryptographic signatures and a series of metadata captured with the sensors of your device. This evidence can be used in legal cases or to back up any documentation you make with your phone. With me today are Armando and Nicolas from the Popular Media Lab of Mexico. And we invite them because they recently used proof mode to document a very interesting case study. Armando, Nicolas, welcome. How about we start by talking a little bit about who you guys are and what the Popular Laboratory does? Uh, yes, well, uh, hello to all of those who are listening to us. A pleasure to be here in this space uh, sharing with you. And we are the Popular Free Media Lab. And basically, we dedicate ourselves to accompanying communities that are in the... Uh, in the defense of territory processes, we provide whatever support is needed in the use of technology and communication. We come from doing community journalism, from doing community radio. We are people from communications. But quickly, uh, communicating also involves using technology. Uh, and uh, we quickly fell in love with that world. And what we do is share everything we, uh, we've learned about technology for communication with these communities. They need these tools for their defense of the territory, primarily. Excellent. Armando, do you want to add anything else? Uh, well, we are a community with little time. And from the, the, the technical, uh, practical needs of communication, we have delved more into uh, digital technology. And so now we coincide with Occupy, uh, this software, right, uh, proof mode, to register a lot of the material that we commonly capture. That's right. We invited them today because they were part of a caravan that traveled through several southern states of Mexico documenting ecological damages and to indigenous communities caused by a tourist development. Can you tell us a bit about the tourist development going on and the impact it's having on those communities? Uh, well, there was an initiative uh, here in Mexico. It was uh, called the Caravan of the South Resists, the International Caravan, an international meeting the Zoresiste. And it was visiting during uh, 12 days, so various states of the south, southeast of Mexico, and mainly documenting environmental, socio-environmental, ecological impacts. Yeah. Of the impacts that uh, many of the projects that are being developed have, among others, touristic, uh, but there are commercial ones. This affecting the areas uh, and that's why we thought it was important the work we were documenting to which we were invited to do this work well both journalistic taking the photo and the video to the uh, you got dressed that storing it this uh, uh, curating the captured material all that helped us uh, this tool uh, in general we seek that the information we are uh, getting from the communities can serve them in all areas, uh, not just in dissemination, but also as a legal resource, as a way to make clear that that happens at such time. Uh, well, we found it important to use it right now, and we went to striking places where it is the peak of the Mayan train, the Interoceanic Corridor, uh, we made, uh, in terms of climate change, a community called El Bosque in Campeche, which is, well, it's literally already under the seawater. The sea is eating it. But this matter of uh, goodbye, uh, that the poles tow and that it's rising, uh, the global tides, uh, and, well, it was shocking. And, well, uh, this tool also helped us to capture those moments. 
If possible, we can mention some of the other organizations that participated in this caravan or activists. Who else collaborated with you at this time? This caravan, the caravan by the name carried the South Resistance and was convened by the National Indigenous Congress. The Indigenous National Congress is a meeting place, a coordination for many indigenous communities in Mexico advocating for autonomy processes, for processes of building an alternative to the capitalist model. So it's precisely the commission, I mean, the caravan itself is made up of, uh, I'm a member of these different indigenous communities uh, from various regions of Mexico. And we also invited people from abroad to participate, mainly people from Europe, very close to Zapatismo, and the caravan that Zapatismo made a while ago through Europe. The same people who knew about uh, Zapatismo was also very interested in participating in this caravan. And we also have a quite significant international component that also helped to better spread what was happening. And uh, well, we were invited as an organization, support organization to oversee all the issues of precisely coordinating communication and how it generated the constant publication of content during the caravan. So in that sense, as Armando says, all these tools that allow us uh, ensuring what we're recording is true is very important because it's not just about the media impact anymore, but also that material now becomes useful for a legal strategy that might generate certain impacts or certain resistance also from a legal side to these projects uh, that in the case, for example, of the Maya train, uh -huh. they have already been questioned in the courts and the very Supreme Court uh, has questioned the studies, uh, the ecological impact of this train, but still, well, this project continues. So all these kinds of tools uh, help us and this kind of content production as well help strengthen the defense of the territory and the environment. How many people participated in those 12 days of tour through Mexico? Uh, how much does it cost? Uh, Tosia, uh, uh, well, about 200, wow. uh, 300 puppies. Yes, uh, there were three full buses. This city A couple buses, of tea. Uh, and one, two, uh, five cars minimum. Sometimes increased to seven, depending. Uh, sometimes there were certain territories where more people joined us. More bus? Of course, the island... Uh, um, they shared with us where at every place they stopped, they had conferences and dialogues with the local people and the team. Because it's going to end up super interesting. So also the evidence they sent us, we know they had several problems along the way. There are some who want to share on the podcast. Uh, well, yes, I mean, undoubtedly a critical documentation project uh, in a territory that is politically governed right now. Who are you criticizing? Uh, it can generate risks, and that's why we also feel the importance of See you next time. validating our documentation. Um, well, yes, there were many problems during the, um, the journey in the sense of inspections, detentions, and uh, uh, the the checkpoints, uh, both military, immigration, police, and others that you. we never knew. Uh, yeah. Was there uh, anyone there who belonged to a uh, police, military, or other institution? The thing. Uh... Uh, well, thank you. As thanks to you. Well, that's it. And we we also had to document a bit, which was kind of the, the purpose of the caravan of so many people. A significant part of that group, I was going as communicators uh, with that uh, to share the complaint. Uh, and part of the complaint is this: the militarization that is happening nationally, but mainly in these corridors, uh, tourist, uh, industrial, commercial that are being generated. And yes, we got a lot of that type. Fortunately, uh, there were no negative consequences for anyone. I mean, it was a clean record. Greta!
Uh, but yes, there was a lot uh, harassment, uh, tracking of all kinds of armed forces. In Mexico, it's not uh, so common suddenly to see like a military body and court uh, entering the middle of a rally, for example, or get so close, so close to a demonstration and photograph it. And now it was very recurrent. It was constant. Uh, the absolute truth. On the way, right? Thank you. Thank it you. happened in Candelaria. It happened Goodbye. in Felipe Carrillo Puerto. For instance, Darone te neusa se. There are some pictures of Candelaria, who is a municipal police officer filming with a phone. That was private property, uh, not even a public space. And it was the space where we were. We were not even doing a public activity. We were at our meeting, at our assembly. Uh, and and it was the place where we had slept. And so the police arrived, entered as if nothing, and started recording. So yes, we were very surprised by the militarization of the area. I mean, that also uh, as a complaint and as to place here and something that what surprised us when we went there is that the Maya train was not being built by Mexico's Ministry of Public Works or the Public Works Secretariat. Both are including the army. The army is in charge of building the Maya train. So the entire construction zone of the Maya train covers the entire Yucatan Peninsula. It's heavily militarized. New barracks are being created at each of the stations. It's a, um, a new barracks that is currently under construction. I mean, not that it's going to be a barracks, but it currently is a barracks. Uh, they sleep and leave the soldiers in the construction zones. So. One might think that the military is coordinated, right? So uh, if one goes through one military checkpoint, two military checkpoints, they should be warned that to the next 10, what this caravan is about, uh, the information is already there. We have been presented with all the papers. It is clear who they are. And for us to be given free passage, right? To move forward without so many problems. But the truth is, on the contrary, uh, the searches intensified. The request for papers increased one by one. As we either they are uh, uncoordinated and do not coordinate among themselves, or it was an intention to harass and annoy uh, and making people nervous. Okay, can you share with us some of the safety protocols you've set up or the measures that have arisen? When this started happening among you, what measures did you take to protect yourself and for to prevent this from escalating? Yes. Uh, I know they didn't let them record video or audio sometimes when they stopped them for the information they shared with us. So there's something else they had to be careful about. Human right onward. This Thank is you. What I tell. What's here, we all should tell. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, human rights groups, uh, human rights observers were present at all times. Uh, most of them are civilians. Uh, there was also a safe foreigners and some minimal protocol. For example, those who brought uh, radio locators that were in cars or buses, uh, the people in charge had communication and certain agreements on how to uh, drive the, the caravan. But yes, a lot of it was that uh, at the moment, suddenly we had to improvise with whatever was missing. And I perceive many revisions and some were a bit more rugged than others, but well, sometimes they will be calmer. Uh, but I think the main thing was that uh, I was going to a human rights observation group that were the ones who making the first approach with, uh, with the army and so on. Notices were also given, uh, notices were also sent to authorities. I mean, a letter was sent to the state governorships Notifying of the passage of the caravan that is also okay. Safe. And well, uh, as Armando says, from one side, from the collective part of the caravan, in which we were invited to participate uh, specifically in the communication commission, we were not so much in the organization and security commission. And then we, uh, apart as communicators who are constantly in territories uh, complicated, threatened, have their own uh -huh. security protocols. And that basically consists of us having trusted people who don't go to the place. They are monitoring our progress in relation to the caravan itineraries and also the information that we are providing them. And 
in case we also have certain levels within that protocol and if an alarm is already activated well uh, because that uh -huh. person carrying the task of communicating with various human rights organizations in mexico city and internationally uh, they have our data they know our cases and they have our information to be able to apply direct pressure to the high spheres of government uh, that's like the two ways we have it and in these cases when they felt uncertainty when they were feeling that they were at risk having tools like which are free and easy to use and allow them to document discuss things that can be verified in the future by an agreement would it help you by integrating into the security protocols that you already have do they trust more well i mean as a journalist yes is the I feel that uh, being part of a caravan is a risk. I mean, pulling out a camera in front of a fact of vulnerability, they are risks. But, well, as a journalist, you know that uh, you constantly run that risk and knowing that you have a slightly more solid also of the moment, well, it can also help you. Uh, maybe it's not the safest. Uh, I mean, taking the picture, for example, at the moment, uh, when such detention is in of a course. situation of detention, this, but undoubtedly, uh, knowing that you can have better protection validity from the uh, state. If uh, they are they free me. to that. Uh, but yes, uh, and well, as a journalist, yes, exactly. well, yes, one knows that uh, he runs that Thank risk. you very much. I mean, we were a caravan that was not like a camping. Yes, they were on vacation. That's true. Yes, it's uh, yes. Wait, so let's see if that I have I would to do the protest same, but, uh, or. Uh, and there was already um, there were previous experiences uh, from other Goodbye. caravans where, well, at the moment, no, there are places in the country that are hard to cross for many reasons, right? I mean, uh, mainly, uh, well, organized crime, no. Violence is very rampant, including the southeast of Mexico. Crossing it was not easy. Goodbye. It was part of the uh, the challenge, the desire to spread the word. We had been invited to communicate. Uh, we had to communicate it. And yes, there is uh, another way in that sense to have more certainty about what we were taking pictures, uh, capturing images, storing material, and. Uh, in the forming, right? But of course, Prusmos is a help when getting this data more solidly. Because what we have experience here in Mexico with this topic, I mean, and for instance, an experience several years back in Oxitlan, Oaxaca, there was a teacher uprising and the army, the police shot to kill people uh, and in the official press and the government said no, that only the police had come out with buttons. I mean, with sticks, I make the journey. No one had died. That was false. It was a fabrication. Caracol News, the free media of the alternative press of the social networks. So as a colleague, we, we put together the photos of the police uh, shooting uh, and they were published. In fact, they were published for the colleague's safety in several media at the same time. And a few, one or two hours later, the Mexican government releases a press statement where it says that th those photos are fake. They're from another day, another time, from another situation. And there, what we reacted was that we grabbed uh, the metadata that photo had, and we published it along with the photo. And we came out again with a coordinated press campaign to discredit the government again. And that's when the barrier of pay media could be broken. Uh, this life fell. And now in Mexico, the case of Nochistlan and the deaths of Nochistlan are known. So to have a tool like a proof mode, which already gives us more solidity, encrypted, encrypted, certified, it also saves us uh, that concern of having to later be saying, no, this is real. No, look, here it is. Here are all the data. You can take them to an expert or a judge, and he will certify that this is real. So um, in that sense, proof mouse is a big help for this kind of work entirely. Okay, can we chat a little more about what other tools were used apart from Frayu to document not only software, but also hardware. And if they used 
professional cameras, video cameras, or if everything was documented with cell phones, uh, a great thing? Well, what happens is that um, we have a broad communication commission and the positives were very varied, no doubt. Uh, and everyone had a mobile, everyone took with their mobile. But yes, as the more professional work is positive, bigger, both video cameras, audio cameras. Uh, do they use a drone? Stabilizer, so this DTI. Yes, and large format cameras. Thank you very much. 4K. XLR video, XLR photography cameras, reflex that make video. I mean, there were like 52 people written down. They were, uh, at least in communication, there were about 15 countries. Wow. And, okay. and many went with the intention of commenting. So they brought, uh, many brought uh, equipment uh, as if planned to participate uh, in the documentation. We, as a communication commission, were carrying uh, the spider. I mean, let's follow. In the, the end? And, well, the, a bit of work in storage and managing the networks. And that helped us a lot with the PC, although we also helped each other with the phone. And as we were with the mobile PC and on other tasks, like driving, yes, uh, yes. The mobile helped us a lot with photo and video recording. The first here, perhaps, then sometimes the challenge for minister in the function and of it's always technical to to carry a good device that that the applications run well because generally suddenly uh, on the road three or four more applications for X or Y reason and uh, sometimes those phones seem to slow down but uh, in general well the phone has a very good uh, communication tool as well it's important and well um, it helped me in particular because well i didn't have to go for the ip or the camera uh, but i needed uh, well the it's more practical thank you a pleasure thank you so cats and yes i might i guess you have many hours of assembly photos videos and audio of this caravan what's the next step with those materials what are your goals the ones who think go by several goals uh, the first goal was to organize all the material and put it in several physical copies uh, arrange it chronologically by locations and authors and everything that's already a tiffet. it's done and so uh, now what we're going to do is ingest this material, then that is take this material and we're going to upload it to a platform that we work with, which is called Living Memory, which is a platform that has been around since 2018, accumulating videos of human rights violations. First in Chile, Mr. Gubner, uh, in the context of the Chilean protest that later had to deal with the constitution, then that database was also fed with uh, videos from Argentina during the pandemic, there they were with curfew and Argentina, a country especially suffered, harassed, uh, suffers a lot uh, with the issue of easy trigger that are extrajudicial executions of young people by the police. And this was very intensified during the pandemic. And these videos also aimed to record those human rights violations by the police during this curfew. So, the material from Peru, Colombia was also incorporated. We are also working with material from Ecuador. So we also want, while these other materials are uh, of the context of protests that are being sheltered on this free and autonomous platform. Uh, we also believe that this material is not for protest, but for denouncement of what is happening. It can also be useful. It should also be stored in the same way, in a safe, resilient way autonomous away from large corporations away from governments and then we believe that uh, it's important to also incorporate into the living memory database everything that was recorded and all the impacts that could be documented uh, in the mayan jungle because yes that's also intensive yes uh, we also publish information about this caravan as part of Proof Corps, which is a program of proof mode for documenting things that are happening in the world. World, and I know that the South also resists had a website where it published. They explain what was happening. 
happening at the caravana when they also finished? Yes, 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 yes. We also to help on the portal. Well, it's on the, uh, the next video. Uh, now, after the caravan and the meeting, uh, uh, it was decided to continue with the global campaign. Uh, observing those places we visited a few weeks ago, it was done an update on the visited spaces, on how the impact continues to grow. And while well, the page continues to be a space there, uh, for reference, and that's all. Yes, precisely on that website, you need to keep connecting, tuning in. Sounds very old-fashioned because, uh, because uh, uh, as Armando comments, that page remains active in the context of the global campaign of the South Resists. Information will continue to be followed. Calls to activities will continue to be published and also... Also, well, we were talking about living memory as a way of storing it for... Uh, the legal advocacy processes but also uh, we will soon publish a microsite on the website with the journey of the caravan uh, with videos made from this recombination of data and videos that were made that's already being edited there's an international commission that meets every two weeks and they're editing this video so that uh, the date is for the 15th, uh, sorry, for the 17th of August, around there. They already want to update the website with the different videos and extra information, photos, selection of photos of what is expected from what was recorded and everything. So the page continues super video so that they stay super attentive there. Super well, finally, let's talk a little bit about your experience incorporating proof mode among your digital tools to your user experience. I know they hadn't used it before the caravan and they incorporated it immediately. As new users, what did you think complicated, simple? Would you add anything? Was anything missing? Uh, well, for me, it was easy to install, easy to use, well, like all software. Uh, I believe that uh, when one reads one of the directions, uh, it becomes clear from the first moment if one reads everything. Uh, this, uh, And perhaps what struck me suddenly was that uh, at least on my device, I couldn't record video from the app that proof of mode offers okay i mean yes well it was clear to me that i could record with uh, with my own recorder already pre-installed and that uh, and having promo already activated it will indeed be recorded but i think maybe adding it would later help in this debate of uh, placing a camera uh, that nothing more and i think it's a very good tool uh, and practice of occupying very practical yes for me too i agree with armando it was if one reads bye, the things bye, bye, bye. it's well explained i really like that especially for me uh, i really like that it worked in the background meaning that i could continue using my my normal camera thanks uh, for watching I the video decide later on which one this or so that video channel i'm going to put it in proof mode i found it very comfortable because it didn't mean I had to change my phone habits. So I liked it a lot. Uh, personally, the problem I had there, I think I my phone wasn't very high flame, but uh, after putting together eight long videos, it was taking too long and I couldn't process and sip them. But once I started working with shorter video or sending the videos one by one, I didn't have any problems and the tool worked pretty well. And if I could make any modifications or changes, I would like it to have a spy camera option. I mean, because uh, I need to have, in order to record it, the phone and leave it, for example, somewhere uh, in the car or in a place like that kind of hidden. Currently, if I set it up, the camera will be running and it will be noticeable that the phone is That's on. how it is. Would there be an option to start the recording and the screen would go like to the screensaver or it was black and still kept the recording would be very useful because that would be very useful for situations where you need to go unnoticed while recording 
because there are situations where one can record without a problem, uh, but there are others that will, it's more complicated. So that would be of great help. It makes sense and it's a very good recommendation for future developments of proof mode that we will definitely consider. Well, thank you very much, Nicolas and Armando, for joining us today. This has been everything. If they want to visit us, go to www.pueblo.org. Rufamo.org.